Hello, welcome back everybody back to my 69 favorite horror films list. I'll just go ahead and kick this uh, list off here with Arachnophobia. Um, Arachnophobia is a film I love. Uh, I want another film that I grew up watching when I was younger. I had a lot of fun time with it. The cast is really good. Jeff Daniels and uh, fucking John Goodman in the film are hilarious. John Goodman is my favorite character in the film just because he's so goofy. He's, he's just hilarious. I love it like when he sees a, a spider like sit outside on the porch. He <laughs> He looks at it and goes, uh, uh, he's just like, he's like staring at it, like staring it down, and then he just, uh, walks and steps on it. I just thought that was hilarious. Now, at the end of the movie, when he's spraying all the spiders with the chemicals, and he, he, uh, before he jerks out his sprayers, he goes, let's rock and roll. I just love that. John Goodman is great in this film. He's hilarious. I like John Goodman as an actor, and he's good in this film. Uh, Jeff Daniels, I really love. The end of this film, um, is a blast. When Jeff Daniels realizes uh, that the uh, the nest, the spider's nest, is in his uh, is in his actual house in his basement, I believe, or his cellar, and uh, he's down in there, and uh, he has to like take on like it's kind of like he uh, like takes on the uh, the general spider and then like the queen spider. I think it's been a few years since I've seen it, but uh, I I know he takes on two final spiders at the end of the film. But this film is just a lot of fun, and when he, he like kills the one at the end of it by shooting it into like a uh, fucking like shooting it and causes it to fly backwards into like this uh, juice box and electrocuting it, and it's just so funny. It's like final, it's like a final boss battle of a video game or something. Uh, it's just so much fun. This movie isn't particularly particularly scary, but if you do have a uh, if you are arachnophobic, or if you or if you do suffer from arachnophobia, I mean, then you probably will find this film hard to watch. With the creepiness of the spiders. And the song at the end of the film. I think is just hilarious. It's like. Don't squish me. We're better left alone. Like a song from a damn spider's point of view. Uh, <laughs> I just thought that was great. The This film is a lot of fun. I recommend it. Um, it's not the best killer. Like an uh, animal movie ever made. Or anything like that. But for what it is. A movie about uh, killer spiders. I think it's an ex extremely fun time. I think it's a, I think it's a, a very like a. I mean, it's the type of movie you can put on and uh, watch it and kill about an hour and something, and you know it'd be over and be like, oh, that's pretty good. That was a really that was a fun time waster. Uh, well, I mean, it's not. I mean, not a fun time waster, but that, you know, you can say that was a fun time. This is a film I watched like over and over on HBO, like late at night it would play on HBO, and I would just flick it on there, and there'd be arachnophobia, and I would have fun watching it just with the host spider idea. And the, the, the little creepiness of the spiders. Like I said, this film isn't particularly scary. But just like the creepiness of the spiders in the film. And if you do suffer from arachnophobia, I would recommend... <laughs> I would say, I would recommend watching the film for it being a film. But if you do suffer from arachnophobia... I mean, for it being a good film. But if you do suffer from arachnophobia, then uh, you've been warned that the that this film will, will probably not help your, uh, help your fear in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, this is, a, this is a really good film that I enjoy because it has likable characters and fun characters like the John Goodman character. Uh, any complaints about the film? Uh, I like the spider action, but I wish there would have been more deaths in the film. I feel like too many of the characters survive. That's just my opinion, though. Uh, but other than that, I think this film is a really fun time. And I definitely recommend it to, to anyone who's looking for a fun little killer animal film. Or who just wants to uh, watch a, a fun uh, horror film with some uh, with fun little comedy bits in it. Gonna jump into some Clive Barker here. This uh, this film right here, Candyman. I really enjoy this film. I didn't watch this film until I was older. Uh, but this film has a great, uh, a really great urban legend feel to it with the whole uh, idea of say if you say Candyman's name in the mirror five times, he comes for you and well fucks your world up. <laughs> But yeah, it has a great urban legend feel like that, and just the setting of the film with the with the like a decaying looking version of the ghetto and everything, just really adds to the creepiness and urbanness of this film. And Tony Todd in the film as the character Candyman, who's uh, like uh, trapped inside uh, the mirror, uh, her mirror world or whatever, and and comes or spirit world I guess you could say or purgatory one. And comes out of the and comes out of like a purgatory through the mirror to kill whoever has summoned his name. Tony Todd's acting in the film with his deep sounding voice is terrific, and the killer has a really cool look with the hook for the hand and everything. And uh, and just Tony Todd's like acting as the character 
is just terrific. And him covered in bees like that uh, in some scenes just shows some dedication as an actor. That's something I wouldn't do. I wouldn't want to be covered in bees in a film. But I think he, he pulls it off really convincingly in this film. And he's great. And the rest of the cast in the film, it's it's fine. Uh, I mean, they're fine. Um, as for the, the kills in the movie, uh, the what kills you do get in the film, you don't get a whole lot. But it, the film makes up for it with just like the creepiness of it, with the whole idea of Candyman and like the small community in the ghetto who's like who like knows who Candyman is and they're like keeping his legend alive. This film just has a really spooky atmosphere to it, and you really feel for the main character of the film, played by Virginia Madison. You just really feel for her because of all the stuff that Candyman's putting her through in the movie, trying to make her eventually turn to him and give in to him, so you can have like a, I guess a mate. To take back the hell with him, which is a really interesting idea. Um, it's really creative. Uh, Clive Barker's uh, stories are normally really creative, but they usually don't translate very well to screen uh, or to the screen. But I think in this case, this is one film that translated extremely well to the screen. And this is uh, my second film, uh, second favorite film based off his work next to the first Hellraiser film. I really enjoy this film, and I recommend that horror fans definitely check this film out and uh, just just for just check it out for Tony Todd's performance alone as Candyman that's worth seeing in the film alone but if you have a phobia of bees I do recommend <laughs> yeah that I recommend that if you have a phobia of bees definitely be prepared for a lot of bee action in this film but just the tone of this film and the feel of this film I I, I just love it I just can't get enough of it I watch this film like once every Halloween or at least every like uh every like year or so. I watch it at least once and it still holds up. I watched it when I was older. Um I'd seen bits and pieces up before when I was younger, but I never really sat through the entire film and I watched it when I was older and just had such a great time with it. As far as the sequels go, part two is okay, part three is shit. <laughs> but um I would love to see another one of these, a part four with Tony Todd back in the role. Uh, I think uh, I think this is a franchise that I would like to see another sequel in. But uh, I don't know if we'll ever get one, but I would really like to see one. This is just a character that I think has more potential uh, than just being. Then I mean I think this I think this is a character that has more uh, has potential that can be used in more films instead of just three films. Three films just I don't know. That's a decent amount. But I just feel like it's high time for a fourth Candyman film. Ah, Child's Play, baby. <laughs> Another one of uh, my favorites uh, as a kid. Most of the films on here are movies that I watched when I was a kid or grew up with, which is why they're more than likely my personal favorites. But Child's Play, uh, the first film, definitely is, uh, in my opinion, the best killer doll film ever made. I love this film. Um... Brad Dourif's voice as the character of Chucky is just so he's just so good. He just plays all levels of Chucky just like so great, just like asshole Chucky, over the top screaming scary Chucky. He just plays it so well, and all the different versions of Chucky throughout the franchise, despite the different uh, quality of each of the movies, he plays those different versions of Chucky well. The funny Chucky, goofy Chucky, whatever, creepy, scary Chucky. He does them all terrific. The character of Chucky is one that works so well in the film because the character is scary even when he's not moving just because he's a creepy ass looking doll. And the first film actually relies on suspense a lot, which is what helps set it apart from the later films where Chucky moves around a lot more. This film is this easily the scariest film of this franchise and is an extremely creepy film on its own. Um, just the dialogue that Chucky has, like when Catherine Hicks threatens to set him on fire and he's like, you stupid bitch, you filthy slut, I'll teach you to fuck with me. Just that dialogue alone right there elevates this film up to being the best uh, killer doll film I've ever seen. Along with Brad Dourif's voice work, um, his vocal talents are just terrific for this character. Uh, the film stars Catherine Hicks. Uh, she does good in the role as the as the mom character. Alex Vincent, he's really cute as the character Andy who gets the doll for a birthday present. <laughs> he's terrific in the film. Uh, Chris Sarandon. Uh, Chris Sarandon does really good in the film. I would have liked for him to do a little bit more in the film, but he but he's really good in the film for when he's there. He's still really good. Uh, I would love to see Catherine Hicks or Chris Sarandon return for one of the sequels. I heard that because of the success on Blu-ray and DVD of Curse of Chucky that there will be a seventh one. 
So I really hope that uh, in the next film that they at least bring back Chris Sarandon. I would really enjoy seeing that. But uh, for the final note on this film, this film uh, is on my list uh, because this is the uh, this truly to me is the real like epit epitome uh, or or the this really to me is the coolest and best killer doll film ever made. And this film makes my list uh, truly because of the character of Chucky and just how cool he is. The whole voodoo like uh, subplot in the film and everything is a little weak, but just the character of Chucky and just how he acts and Brad Dourif's voice and everything and the creepiness of like the killer doll idea handled uh, handled really well here in this film by director Tom Holland is what puts this film on my list as not only one of my favorite horror films but my favorite killer doll film ever made. Now on to the Collector, my favorite Saw clone. <laughs> I wouldn't really say this film is a Saw clone. It has a lot and has a lot in common with Saw. Well, actually, not a lot. Uh, the only thing it really has in common with Saw is the traps. Uh, I do like the killer in this film, the killer, the collector, better than the killer from Saw. Um, yeah, I, I do really enjoy this film, which is why it's on my list. Um, I enjoy what what I do enjoy about this film though is the action in it. This film is not the greatest horror film like ever or anything like that by any means. But what really helps this film is that the killer, the collector, is is really well done, and he's really creepy. And uh, not only is this film good, but it has a good sequel too. I would say that this is only a decent horror film, though. I mean, I would say it's a good horror film, but only, but it's not like a really great horror film by any stretch of the imagination. And this film wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Saw. Uh, the whole trap idea in the film is a little bit too much like Saw. Well, I would say a lot too much like Saw, and that's the only part I really don't like about the film. But other than that, I do like the killer in the film. But what really helps this film is the character of Arkin. The character of Arkin in the film, who is a criminal who's trying to rob this family's house. At the same time as there just happens to be the killer, the collector, at the family's house. So I always like movies like that when it's kind of like the, the lesser evil has to take on the greater evil. Uh, which inadvertently makes the lesser evil, the, the thief, you know, the the hero. I always like movies like that. Um, and the struggle between Arkin and the character of the collector in the film uh, is really good. And the action, scene is, and the action scenes in this film are really good. Uh, with, that's what really helps this film for me and puts it on my list and makes it a, a really enjoyable film for me is just the struggle between Arkin and the collector and the action that you get to see with them two going at it. This film has a really good sequel called The Collection, which watching this, The Collector and The Collection back to back uh, is a lot of fun. I would like to see a third film, but uh, there's not really anywhere the franchise could really go, I don't think, with a third film. But you never know. They might be able to uh, come up with something. My idea for a third film, what I would like to see, would I, would like, I wouldn't mind seeing a prequel about The Killer for a third film. Uh, just to end it with as a trilogy, you know, the collector collection, you know, collected. Just to end it like that with a with a with, as a trilogy with the third film explaining who the killer is and where he came from, and just let that be the end of this franchise. I wouldn't mind that, and I like I really enjoy watching the character Arkin so much. To be honest, I wouldn't mind an Arkin spinoff either, just a movie about him and like his time in prison or something. Uh, but that would uh, or his time in prison before the beginning of this film. That would be interesting. I would like to see that. This uh, this is an enjoyable film. It's not a really great film, um, but it is really enjoyable for the action and uh, just for the struggle between Arkin and the character of the Collector. And the character of the Coll uh, the Collector, I think, is uh, a cool horror villain, and I would like to see more of him in at least one more film. Uh, I don't think this franchise or this character is out of steam yet. And to be honest, the collector kind of kicks ass like really good in combat in the film. I always like to imagine that maybe it's fucking uh, Sylvester Stallone or Jet Li or somebody wearing the mask. <laughs> that would be funny though. But in the final film, we actually learn that his true I or in the third film, we learn that his true identity his true identity is like uh, Jason Statham or something. But uh, but yeah, the reason this film makes it on my list is just because the character of the collector is really cool, and I like the idea of the collector, uh, how he only takes one person from. Uh, whatever family he kills and adds them to his collection but and uh, the character of Arkin I really enjoy as well and the struggle between him and the collector the struggle between these two characters and them duking it out and everything and uh, is highly entertaining and that's why this film makes my list that and it's got it's got pretty good action <laughs>
But yeah, that's why this film makes my list, and I definitely recommend that uh, people check it out, or horror fans check it out. It's one of the uh, better Saw-inspired films. Now on, to not, now on to another, not just one of my favorite uh, horror films, but also another one of my favorite movies in general, Creep Show. I love this film, directed by George Romero and written by Stephen King, even starring Stephen King <laughs> in one of the stories. Uh, this film is just terrific. It's a great, tri it's a great like movie made in the style of like the old EC Comics, Tales from the Crypt style comics. This film is terrific. I watch it every Halloween. Uh, this, the original Halloween and Trick or Treat, are the three films I watch every Halloween. This film is so much fun. I love this film to death. I can't get enough of this film. I could even watch it right now. It's so much fun. I'm just such a big comic book nerd, and I just love like the whole comic book style of the film. And uh, just the way the stories are, just each one of the stories is just so much fun. My favorite story of the, in this movie is the story about the crate uh, where the dude, like uh, like his wife in the film, like treats him like shit. And he obviously wants to get away from her to get rid of her. And uh, his friend like finds this monster in a crate, says like Arctic Expedition on it. And it like starts killing all these people at this uh, college university and eating them. And at the end of it, the dude like feeds his uh, wife to the creature. That right there, that story within itself, I think, uh, to be honest, is uh, the one that feels the most like a movie. And I think that that story could could be adapted into a uh, feature-length film, that story by itself. I would love to see that story as a, as a complete movie. But uh, as the film is, I love this film. This film is so much fun. Not just the my favorite story, the one about the monster in the crate, but all the stories in the film. Uh, the one about the zombie father coming back to life for Father's Day, the one with Leslie uh, Neeson, Le Leslie Neeson of all people, uh, <laughs> uh, burying um, his uh, his uh, his wife and his uh, and his wife's lover like in the in the fucking beach like where the tide to come in and like uh drown them. That uh, that story I also really like. It's fun seeing Leslie Neeson play a villain. After used to after I'm so used to seeing him play like uh in all in so many comedies, all the time, um and I miss him uh I miss that actor he he was really good I was I was a fan of Leslie Neeson he's really funny uh and this film right here shows me that he had a, a more of a range of acting talent than what I knew of um that he could also play uh crazy asshole roles which he does really well in this film. But uh, not just that story and the Father's Day story, but um, all the other stories in this film are all good. I enjoy them all, and I even enjoy the wraparound. And on a little note here, the kid at the beginning of the film uh, is actually Stephen King's son, and he, the kid who uses the voodoo doll to kill his dad at the end of the at the end well, for the final wraparound of the film at the end of the film. That's actually Stephen King's son, I believe. Uh, and that right there just <laughs> adds even more charm to this film. But I love this film all the way down to just like the poster of this film and the cover art of how it looks and just the even the creeper like the the creep show, uh the creeper puppet in the film like the skeleton just the way he looks I even like that it just gives like an old school feel to this like an old comic book uh, style vibe to this film that just works so well and gels so well with it look out for uh, Tom Savini who's also in the film in a cameo as a garbage man at the end of the film. This film is just chock full of like so much fun stuff, and you can just tell it was a labor of love. And the Stephen King stories are all really good. I don't really have a problem with any of the stories, despite some being better than others. Um, but they're all a lot of fun, and this movie is a is a whole lot of fun. And I and I just love every Halloween year carving a jack o' lantern and popping this some bitch in the VCR. This film will never grow old to me, no matter what. And this is one film that I really hope never gets remade because I just don't think a remake could do this film justice. I just think it would be so hard to recapture the magic of this film and the atmosphere of this film in a more modern film of today. I just don't think that uh, I just don't think that filmmakers of today uh, can, could would, could really capture the essence of this film and the comic book style of this film over again and redo it over again in a new and interesting way and the film is just fine on its own um there's plenty of ways you could just you could just easily do another anthology movie in a similar style to in, in a well i mean just do another anthology film in a similar style to this film there's no reason for a remake of this film that's just my opinion just on the remake idea of this film 
But I love this film, and this film makes my list because I'm a huge comic book fan, and this film is just nothing but a labor of love, the old school style EC comics, and just uh, and just like also the the horror stories in the film. Uh, not just because they're a labor of love, the old school style EC comics with the the feel and everything of the film, just just the horror stories in the film. I think they're just so much fun. And like I said, I do recommend car. I recommend anybody who loves Halloween to carve a jack o' lantern on Halloween. Uh, this is another film uh, along with Tremors that I recommend that uh, to pop some popcorn with and sit back and relax and enjoy the creep show. Now on to one of the greatest masterpieces, if not if not the greatest masterpiece of, of horror. Well, uh, pretty much the great, at least the greatest uh, zombie masterpiece or zombie apocalypse film I mean ever made. Uh, this film rules. There's no anybody who has seen this film probably knows why this film is on is on my favorites list. Um, there's not really any reasons that it's on here that it wouldn't be. I mean, that's different than any reasons that would be on someone else's. I love the whole feel of the film, the whole apocalyptic feel, and the characters being trapped in a mall, and the social commentary of the film that George Romero does really well is terrific. I'm a big fan of the first uh, uh, zombie trilogy by George Romero, and I don't mind uh, the Land of the Dead too much. Uh, Diary of the Dead is passable, and Survival of the Dead is just garbage. But uh, as far as the films, I mean, as far as the films go, I would say that either Don or not. Uh, I would I would, no, I would say Don. Well, Don, yes, Don is my personal favorite of the franchise, but I haven't seen Night in so long. I don't know which one's better, Don or Not. But I would say that Don is my personal favorite just because of the huge apocalyptic feel of the film. And I just love uh, Ken Foray in this film. He's a, just a really likable character to me. I just have a I just have a blast watching him on screen and just watching all the characters in the mall and just the, the lines in the film, like the tagline of the film, when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Just that line alone right there sums up the coolness of the film. The, the very fact that it's able to come up with such an epic line like that. And just the social commentary of the film of the zombies all coming to the mall because it's the place they spent the most time at when they were alive. So it's the one place like embedded into their memory. Um, and just that whole idea right there of like uh, people as consumers and everything. That right there I just love and that just shows Romero's talent and his uh, and just his genius with uh, how to work social commentary into his films. Uh, after a while, his social, his commentary, his social commentary, like ideas, would become a little stupid. With would, would, well, would become kind of a lot stupid with Survival of the Dead. But here, it's uh, epic coolness in this film, and it works really well in this film. Uh, the only gripe I have with this film is that some of some of the zombies, well, all, most of the zombies look too similar. They're all like got like this blue tint to their skin, and it it just I don't know. I prefer I prefer I much I do prefer the makeup in Day of the Dead than the makeup in this film of the zombies. Uh, the makeup in Day of the Dead, in my opinion, is far superior to the makeup in Dawn of the Dead. But Dawn of the Dead is a far superior film to Day of the Dead. Um, but yeah, that's my only gripe with the film is that the zombies just look too similar in their makeup and just look too blue. There's just some of them are just like way too blue for my taste. But other than that, this is a great apocalyptic feeling horror film and. I, I just love this film. It's just so much fun to watch. This is another film I love to make. Personally, for me, I love to make popcorn and enjoy this film. I, I, I used to. I would love to watch Night, Dawn, and Day all three in a row and just have a blast at watching them all, the original trilogy in a row. Um, but this one will always be my favorite of the original trilogy and of the entire uh, George Romero zombie franchise in general. Uh, just this film, just this film just has the most like biggest scope to it and biggest feel to it. For, to me of all the uh, George Romero zombie films in my opinion and it also has the best characters in my opinion Ken Foray uh, is my favorite of the characters of uh, the George Romero zombie franchise he just kicks ass as this, one of the SWAT team members and the guy who is like his, his buddy in the film uh, those two characters were my were my two favorite characters of this film and I just loved watching them work and uh, fuck around in the mall and take pictures and stuff like that of themselves in the mall and to like uh, play like the uh, games and the arc and the arcade section of the mall and everything to play the art uh, when they played the arcade games and everything like that in the mall that was that was really fun to watch and Tom Savini showing up actually in the film as a, like one of the looters he's like a biker 
and him and his gang are there, and they're, like, looting the mall and everything. Just having Tom Savini cameo in the film and a fun cameo is always fun. I always enjoy seeing Tom Savini. And the gore effects at the end with uh, the people getting ripped up by the zombies and everything is just fantastic. The special effects, I do think, are better in uh, Day of the Dead. But in my opinion, this film is still the superior film in scope and in character and in writing and it, and and the social commentary in this film, I do think, is better than the social commentary in Day of the Dead or Night of the Living Dead as well. This is a terrific film. I recommend that even if you don't like zombie films, that you at least give this film a shot. I really don't think you'll be... I, I really think that this film might open your eyes to let you... to let you. I mean, like, if you don't like zombie films, I think that you should still give this film a shot because there's more to this film. Like, there's a... There's more meaning to this film than just the fact that zombies, with the social commentary and everything, I think that even if you don't like zombie films, I think that you at least find something in this film that you do enjoy. Um, but if you do like zombie films and are a horror movie fan, then chances are you have seen this film already, so it's kind of useless for me to tell you to go out and watch it. But all in all, just to end this, uh, this is a, uh, just to end this uh, talk about Dawn of the Dead here, this is a terrific film. I love this film. And uh, if you truly haven't seen this film, which I don't really know many people that have that haven't seen this film, but if you really haven't, then I definitely recommend that you check it out because, in my opinion, if you're a horror movie fan and you check this film out, I really do not think that it will be a waste of your time. I think that you'll instantly fall in love with this film just like I did.